Morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Monday. Uh, it is Natasha Makes time because it is 10 o'clock. So thank you ever so much for joining us this morning. Um, I hope I hope today finds you well. Where did summer go? Could someone just tell me that, please? Uh, I appear to be in winter fettle. Oh, wait, my necklace is a bit twisted. Uh, I, I seem to be in winter fettle. That's no fun, is it? Um, can't apparently get myself dressed properly, but that's all right, you know. We don't have very many mirrors in our house, so actually the first time I actually see myself properly is in the screen. Hurrah! Uh, anyway, I hope that you are having a wonderful Monday. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, something a little bit different for you today. I've brought you some um, embroidery kits, beautiful, beautiful felt embroidery kits from a lovely lady called Corinne Lapierre, um, who's, oh, she's French, and she is the most softly spoken woman ever she just ha she has a voice i could listen to for hours uh she's so soft and gentle but she used to work in the fashion industry um and then children happened as they do and had a little change of direction and then discovered felt and realized that actually she loved working with felt and um thought oh maybe i'll put a little kit together with a gingerbread man at christmas to make a little felt gingerbread man uh, and try selling that sort of craft fairs and things and of course it took off massively because we all love our work um all ages love her work. That's the beauty of Corinne's work, is that it transcends age um, and time. Uh, she's influenced by sort of folk arts and things like that. So it means that you can make them absolutely perfectly, as demonstrated here. Going on, let's get them down. Whoop. Um, no, because I've got various people to make these, see what they thought. Um, Look, Inga made these. Aren't they beautiful? All those different stitches. And that's been what she's doing, been doing in the evenings. Gorgeous. And she's made kind of a little mobile out of them. Or we could have a look at these cheeky rascals here. Now, these have been made by um, Ellie, aged eight. And her mother, Anna, age, oh wait, I'll need to turn the sound off. Uh, Anna, aged um, 41. <laughs> and they're all different. Yeah, Anna did the beak. She was very proud of the beak. She's like, I, I did the beak. And then husband, Dave, got involved. Uh, he, did, he stitched on the wing there. Yep, he got involved with that. And, uh, and so, <laughs> yeah, I just, I mean, look at that. Stitched by an eight-year-old. So, you know, they are for all ages. I've done better French knots than I do. Amazing. Uh, and I've got lots of different kits for you this morning. Uh, so we'll go through some of those. So thank you very much uh, to Anna and Ellie for sharing, sharing their homework with us. And um, uh, Ellie, I will drop you over a llama later. Don't you worry. Uh, so who do we have with us this morning? Uh, we have got Gemma and Helen. Good morning. Uh, we've got Jennifer, um, who's just joined in. That's OK. You've already done your shopping, Jennifer. You can sit back and relax. Uh, Heather's there. Really looking forward to today's show. She said, oh, good. Yes, so am I, actually. Really looking forward. Uh, and Linda and Susan. Good morning from Aberdeen. Um, and Susanna's from wintry Liverpool. Ooh, it's really wintry and really windy. Oh my goodness, it's really windy. Um, Davina's excited about today's show. And uh, Helen says, good morning. Doesn't seem nearly a week. You know, when we first started lockdown, it just, time was end. And now, time's going really fast. Can't keep up. Uh, good morning, Marion. Uh, good morning, Laurie and Lynn and uh, Patricia and Kate. Good morning. And Michelle, hello, hello. Um, Diane, yeah. Diane DeWet, who has the best name given today's weather. Uh, yes, it is exactly the perfect weather for staying in and doing some stitching. Hey, April from Australia. Good morning. Did you get my message? Um, April, uh, just message me what you want. We'll calculate the shipping to get you to Australia. Not you to Australia, whatever you wanted to Australia and sorted out that. It's a little bit clunky, I know, but we will get there um, just while the post office is, you know, coping 
with everything at the minute. Uh, and Hilary says, I love Corinne's felt kits. There's a lot of love out there for Corinne, I have to say. Um, oh, Laurie, good morning. Thank you. I'm very, very well. Thank you very much. Um, Tony Robinson's watching. Good morning. And Jill, hello. And Amy, oh, you're all here. Hello. Uh, Catherine says, hi, Natasha. Loving my new Juki DX7 I bought from you a few weeks ago. Thank you. You are so very, very welcome. I'm glad you've got it out of the box and you are actually using it. Uh, they're fabulous machines. Absolutely fabulous. Marion's there. Elizabeth's there. <laughs> Elizabeth, <laughs> what's this no hold bars approach that you have quoted me as being? <laughs> I see. Uh, I don't know that I can argue with it, but it made me giggle this morning. Um, Amy is working from home in Salisbury, so you get to watch. Fabulous. Hello. Hello, hello. Um, good morning. Me and Star the Chihuahua are watching. Well, Jane, I hope that, I hope that uh, she's behaving. Um, <laughs> I had a photo from one of our viewers um, who had four four show dogs watching. Yeah. Uh, Gemma says, lovely projects to do. Um, yeah, it is a perfect day to curl up and do some stitching, Jamie. Quite right. Lots of it. Oh, Jack. Good morning, Jack. She says, yeah, Corinne's work. Amazing lady. Isn't she? Isn't she? Um, Jack, you must have been in the green room at some point um, when Corinne's been in there. She's just gorgeous. Um, uh, Kirsty says, morning, Natasha. My cat's been the star of the show on our team's meeting this morning. Made me think of HP. They like to get in on the act, don't they? They like to. Theo is, um, he's missing Freddie today because Freddie's been home obviously over the weekend and um, so Theo and he would normally be curled up on the sofa today by now and of course he's not here, he's been searching the house, looking for him everywhere, saying so where, where is, where is my small person? Um, he's at school, Theo. So uh, Theo's gone to sleep on his bed. Let's hope that's all he does on his bed because he's got form there. Right, uh, shall we have a look at some of these kits? Um, without further ado, I think. I think, I think. Now, I can't remember for the life of me how much these kits are. I'm sure that someone will tell me. Um, are the big kits £14.99? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. have a look on the website. Everything on the show today is on the website www.natashmakes.com. There we go. I'm sure someone will text me at some point and let me know. Uh, so, 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 so. Um, first things first, some of you have said that you love her books. So let's have a look for the folk embroidered felt birds. Whoops, hang on. Not knocking everything over. Do, 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 do. Look, look, look. Um, I would buy that just for the puffin. I've got to think about puffins at the moment. Well, firstly, their babies are called pufflings. I mean, come on. What's not to love about that for a start? And um, let's have a little look, shall we? What we've got going. Oh, look. So yesterday evening we spent uh, chasing a naughty chicken around the place. Oh, these are fab, aren't they? Look at the pheasant. The pheasants come and clear up after the chickens. Well, these are all rather lovely. Gosh, clever, isn't she? Really clever. Um, so you get your shopping list, what you need, and then shown how to do, look at that, step-by-step -step inst uh, stitch instructions, and then you get your projects. Um, <laughs> it's a, a blue tit, this cold, goldfinch, Chaffinch, swan, oh gorgeous, 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 um, a pigeon. Hey Gemma, that would be suitable for your dad, wouldn't it? He loves a pigeon, he's a pigeon, is it? Um, is the t right term a pigeon fancier? Which always sounds a bit weird, I love the hen, I mean, that's brilliant. And of course, because it's got that folksy feel, that's what I love about it, you don't have to be the world's best stitcher, because I'm not. Um, and so I feel quite comforted by that. I love, 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 love the peacock. Just getting that out there. And I've got the peacock in a mini kit too. Loving the heron. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, he's wise. He's the wise owl. A song thrush. Actually, this is quite good for learning all your birds, isn't it? It's lovely. 
Oh, and the stalk. Oh, wouldn't that make a lovely new baby gift? And a parrot. Let's check him out. Oh, he's looking fabulous. And last, but by no means least, the puff. Oh, no, it's not last because there's something else afterwards. Um, and then you get all of your templates in the back. And SJ's trying to tell me how much everything is, but of course, uh, I missed that. So there you felt birds. And then, da, 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 da. oh, look at this. Um, if you would like your folk embroidered felt birds starter pack, now, just to bear in mind, this is not going to make all 15 birds, but you can start making the projects from the book because it's the same felt colours. And that's the side of, size of Corinne's felt. Let's have this on a bigger screen, shall we, so we can see. These are the size of Corinne's felt. They are half acrylic, half wool, I believe. That's not going to tell me on the back. Um, they're just really lovely to work with. Really lovely. I've been working with them for years. For years, for years. So, yeah, if you want to buy the book, then that goes beautifully hand in hand. But, of course, if you just want gorgeous felt, then you have that option as well. Let's pop that to one side there. Talking of felts, um, Corin also does, and this is just worth bearing in mind because we're going to make today... Uh, we're going to make a little felt needle keep because I figured, you know, if you're going to be embroidering, you're going to need somewhere to keep them. Got it covered. Uh, so that has felt on the inside. Um, the felts, of course, means that you can top up. So any of the projects that you choose, of course, you will then have the um, pattern. So if you want to top up or if you just love her felts and they are totally gorgeous so that's the pastels there let me show you these that is your pastels that is one of my all-time favorites i might have a few packets of those kicking about the place uh, that is your heather so not dissimilar at all in colorway just a little deeper and then if you are after making some furry creatures Oh, well, then that is perfect. And then if you want something a bit vintagey, then there you go. That is your vintage selection. So that's, uh, that's where we're at with the felt. And then, of course, as soon as you get them, you open them out and they're gorgeous. Just look at those beautiful colours. Aren't they stunning? So there are... Oh, I've had one out of here. What have I done with it? Five felts i've obviously taken the uh, the pink out to do something there you go um five felts in a pack and uh, and i'll show you and so yeah you can use you can use these felts i believe that they are big enough i will double check that um for the project that we're going to do today or you can buy the kits for the projects that we're going to do today uh righty ho uh oh, let's have a look at the little mini kits so if you want to have a go and i've got i'll show you what's in if you want to have a go just dipping your toe or let's face it how many people have still got kids off school ha <laughs> ha yeah i i have already had the conversation with some parents along the line of they've only just gone back to school and now they're going to be off for the summer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, going to happen. So, if you fancy stocking up on things that maybe you want to do together, I think that's lovely, and I'm going to make mine into a key ring, because I do have one. Um, I haven't made it yet, but it's here. So you will get all of your threads beautifully bundled, all the colours that you need. There's always a little bit extra. Then you get your lovely ribbon and your needle. Don't, don't lose your needle. Your needle does come in there. Um, Anna and Ellie managed to lose their needle before they'd even started. Amazing. And then there's your felt. All cut perfectly. Then you get all of your templates. And all of your stitching instructions now this is you can see there 
That is level one. So that's a nice, easy make. If you are just starting out, then that is a nice, easy make. And on the back, it shows you the stitches that you need. You've got overhand stitch, running stitch, back stitch, blanket stitch, and a French knot in there. So that would be the B kit. So I'm not going to open up all of the kits because they are sort of of a, of a likeness. But I just wanted to show you the kind of thing that you can expect when you get your kit. Uh, and so we've got the B kit. We have got the um, grey cat. Now the cats come in three different colours if I can find them. So they are um, all under the same item number. You just have to decide if you want the grey cat. It's a bit like Thea, doesn't it? If you want your ginger cat. Oh yeah, he does look suitably grumpy. Something about ginger cats, they always look a bit grump, don't they? Um, if you would like Mr. Black Cat, I think we should call him HP. Uh, then you've got those options. What about bunny in a carrot bed i mean you don't see that every day in a carrot bed um oh anna's joined us uh, she's great kits brilliant too for beginners i can now do a french knot um and i've been stitching a long time and my french knots were going awry and inga had to sort me out this morning so i've got some tips on those uh, you know, I said that I had, f um, not pheasants, peacocks, because they are one of my favourite birds. After ducks, on my list of favourite birds, it goes ducks, then peacocks. It's not the same one that's in the folky book, but oh my goodness, is that not just gorgeous? Just gorgeous, so elegant, so elegant. Um, so we're going to go from elegant to sheep. Yep, just like that. Uh, one of my favourites would be the Highland Cow. Loving him. And these are just lovely little, little, little tiny makes, little makes, but they're good fun. I did ask Corinne when I ordered if she still had the monsters, because uh, the monsters were fab. Uh, and that was the very first thing that I ever stitched of hers. And that was for Freddie. So we're going back about five years ago when I first started stitching Corinne's kits. And then this is the, um, this is the llama. Now, because we all love llamas. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we do. We do. I've got a couple of varieties of llamas. You can have, I'm, I'm going to call this the lone llama. Or... You can have, excuse me for stretching, multi llamas. Oh, you see, look, they're, they're happy. They're having a party. They're so happy because there are three of them. That's how much fun they're having. Lone llama, party llama. It's all good. I'm going to run out of space, aren't I, in a minute? Hang on. Might have to do some of that thing they call tidying. Bit of a worry, isn't it? Little bit of a worry. I sent, um, <laughs> they've kind of been called uh, Team Makes, the Makes Team, uh, <laughs> which is basically everybody else that gets us to this point on a Monday. Um, so Team Makes <laughs> was sent a photo of the absolute carnage. <laughs> Because everything has to double up. The minute the show is done, all the boxes come out so that I can make up all the orders and get them all out. Um, every, it's working hard, this space, at the moment, whilst we, whilst we wait for the rest of the um, shelving and whatnot for the, for the warehouse. Whee! We've got electricity and everything in there now. Very exciting. Let me show you this, because this is cute. This is your felt, uh, felt embroidery kit for your pin cushion in really beautiful soft tones really gorgeous now of course you can decorate it anyhow you wish but in the kit again you get all your instructions a lovely gray marley color 
and that dusky pink. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and here, oh yeah, look at this, posh ones here with all your different stitches on in colour. Lovely. And again, your full instructions there. And all your threads, needle, uh, stuffing, everything. It's all in there. Oh, morning, Shirley. She's arrived a bit late today. Sorry, that's all right. Will you walk in the dog? Um, it was Shirley that sent me the photo of her four, her four dogs. I don't think the fifth one, which is a farm dog, was allowed in on her lap. You have to have quite a big lap, don't you, for all those dogs? They sort of spread out all over the place. Um, Helen says she wishes there was a pig. I'll have a look, Helen, and see. I don't know if there was a pig and I missed it, but what about an embroidered needle case? We're going to do a needle case today as well, but I don't think you can have too many needle cases. That is my um, experience on the matter anyway. Yeah, pretty, isn't it? really pretty but then you see you can have matching so you can have your matching pin cushion and needle case and then your wool felt embroidery kit you can have a sewing pouch did i was i sensible enough to actually ask for a sample of that no <laughs> no i was not go me um yeah, the pin cushion is really cute, isn't it? Really cute. Uh, Fiona says, I hate to say the C word, but you hope Christmas kits will be coming. Well, you know, you know, give us a chance. We started Christmas on the 1st of June, and I think that might have been a bit too early for some of you. There was a bit of a glazed look of horror. Uh, so they are the little kits, and they're uber cute. But these, you know the birds that Inga did? That's your bird kit. And you can make six. Okay, I say you can make six, but Inga has um, cut out enough to make 12. I think because they tessellate, you can't do that with every kit, but certainly with the birds, uh, because you can tessellate them, she's actually cut out enough to make 12, but she would need more stuffing for that. Um, and Anna got upset because she's like, well, I didn't manage to make 12 birds out of my kit. Oh, I know. Can we just have a moment to revisit? Anna, was that, oh, that was your beak, wasn't it, Anna? And Ellie did, Ellie did the rest, who's eight. I, I actually, I did find some of Freddy's monsters that I made him as the very first thing that I ever hand-stitched like that. And, um, and they're, they're still good as ever. I love this one. I've wanted to do the mice for years. For years. I might have to save one for me. Now, what about some Scandi? Lots of lovely birds, aren't there? What about some Scandi birds? So they're a little bit bigger. This is level two, by the way. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Let, I should have given you the level, shouldn't I? Uh, the mice are level three. They've got three out of four. Uh, the ch -ch 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 owls are level one. And the other birds are a level one. So all sorts of different levels. The, um, that one, the felt embroidery, that one is a look, level three. Actually, all of these are. That's a level three. Bing. Level three. That one as well. So those, those three are a level three. Ba -ba -ba, those ones. Uh, I should have done them in some sort of difficulty rating. Oh, I had to get this one. How divine is that gift of the year yeah yeah it's the gift of the year it's fabulous it's a felt rocking horse just beautiful this is level two now with these kits um you just need to add the scissors everything else is in there so if you are giving these as a gift then that's great and if you are giving them to kids by the way that's the other thing just to mention i have one pair left, I can always order more, of the left-handed kid's scissors and a few of the kid's right-handed scissors so that if you want them to cut out the felt bits as well, 
these are aged eight plus, then it is safe to do so. They are on the website. Um, some Fiskars are really hard to get hold of at the moment. It's very hit and miss. I am still waiting, Rona. I know. I am so sorry. I'm still waiting um, on the pivoting rotary cutter because they're just, the factories haven't started up again yet. So uh, I'm still waiting on those. You can't get them for love nor money. I've tried different suppliers, all sorts. Um, but they will be, as soon as I get them back in stock, I'll let everybody know. And anybody who's waiting for one, obviously, will be sent out immediately. Now, what about this? This is a level three as well. This is your craft kit felt sewing roll, which is fab. And look, hang on, let's get this a bit closer for you. Whoop. So you've got your little, you've got, well, you've got a little bit of everything in there. Super, super cute. So you've got that. Um, I'm not going in any particular order here. What about the monkeys? Again, that is a number three difficulty there. But you get three monkeys at the end of it. And he's got dungarees on by the looks of it. Or like Simon Cowell-esque trousers. Loving him. But then if you wanted a kit that's a level two, introduce you into the elephant gorgeous just gorgeous so they are the kits the Corin kits this morning I think they are so much fun whether you're getting them for yourself or for somebody else because you can get them because there's you only need to add scissors and most people have scissors um i think it, it is just gorgeous because you you don't have to add anything else in uh, you can just give it and know that they won't have to incur any extra expense uh, my aunt shirley always used to give us sort of making type gifts uh, when we were growing up and i used to love them in fact i found my old laura ashley patchwork uh, quilt kit the other day that she'd given me but I didn't then it was proper uh, it was English paper piecing and I didn't you know age seven really understand how to do English paper piecing but I've still got it because I never throw anything like that away now now I'm gonna do it yes uh, so they are the felts um, ba -ba. right other new things in this week before we demo the llama is Da, 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 da. Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, I give you, well, I'm not giving them, um, I make no business sense with it. Yeah, yeah, the brand new exclusive to Natasha Makes, actually needs a bit of a press because it's been folded up, um, new felt, uh, wool, sorry, pressing mat. Yes, yes, yes. There it is, which I'm very excited by, really super duper excited by. And, and, and to go with it, which I've been using frantically this morning and I absolutely adore, the little one. This is such a handy size. I'm going to have this in my bag to take to Ho Chanda. In fact, because I've also got today the Prim Mini Irons as well. They're in. I've been promising you these, haven't I, for absolutely for ages. So I think I'm just going to make myself saying to I'm going to make myself up a little, um, a little bag of goodies, a little a sort of separate travel bag, so that when I go back and forth to Ho Chandra on Thursdays, yep, yeah, yep, I can just box up and go. There we go. So I've got that. And um, they are all on the, we uh, the website. They're all underneath where you can watch us live. So if you head to the website, natashamakes.com, click on watch live and we're there. And everything from today's show is underneath if you're looking for that. If you want to catch up on a show that you've missed, go to catch up. And then also underneath now, and the team have been working so hard to put this together. You can then shop the shows. They've tagged all the items for you to make it really easy if you're missing anything from the show. Well, you've seen a kit. If we have any in stock, it'll be tagged underneath where you can watch live. And that's on the website. They're so clever. 
very clever. Um, oh, Tina ordered the large pressing mat yesterday. Looks really useful. It's fabulous. And this colorway, this smoky gray is so smart and it's not going to be available anywhere else. This is just here at Natasha Makes. Personally, I think the two together are stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, and I am so happy to have them. <laughs> and, uh, and I've actually treated myself to a new iron as well so that the other one now, you see, this is why you need a big and a small one, because at the moment, yeah, sure, I've got space for the big one, but we know that any minute I'm going to start working and my actual space is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and then I'm going to have to just whip out the little one here. And there it is. So, but they just fold up. And put away. So, and they're fab. And, um... I'm just going to use this one today. Also in stock, prim turning tools. Have you seen these in action? I've just realised I haven't got anything here to demo them with. Let me just... Oh, 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 oh. Hang on. We can put that right, can't we? Bear with, bear with. Let's show you how these, how these things work, shall we? Wee. Now, uh, the, oh, I'm just going to open myself up the iron. I've promised myself this one. So this, this one's mine. Um, and then if you are getting yourself a prim mini iron, it's a mini steam iron. I don't really use the steam function, but it does have it should you wish to. I don't know why I don't. Just have it, I think. But when you get it and you actually manage to get into it, these, so why do I go for these? Why am I now onto my second one? It's not because my first one is run out. It's because, like I say, I'm going to have a little, a little one, that I, a little bag that I just keep of stuff because I nearly forgot a whole load of stuff for the shows over on Hochanda the other day, and that would not have been a good idea. So I'm just going to keep a box that I know is purely for stuff to go to there, and this will be in it. But it has a two meter length lead, so um, you know your your plugs are not always where you need them to be so the fact that you've got such a long lead on such a tiny iron is fab uh, you also so if you want to fill it with water i've just turned that on that was really silly wasn't it uh if you just you, you get with it so that you can just fill the tank there it's got a little carry case as well but you also have tiny little jug to fill up your tiny little tank and look you've got if you want it to steam steam no steam adjustment um, and then you know however hot you want to have it just turn the dial fabulous and then the little nose comes on to tell you that it's hot love it it's like a little mouse so that's the prim mini iron which we love. Oh, this is its little bag. And it's $34.99. They should be $39.99, but I thought you might want to treat yourself, so I thought I would just take a, a little fiver off because I've been promising it for so long. There we go. That's useful. That's useful. I'm going to put my other one in there. Yeah. When I find it. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. What was I doing? Oh, full instructions as well. Don't need that. I think I know how to use it now. If not, then there's something very wrong, isn't there? Uh, so, yeah, so the iron is on so that I can very quickly make you something to show you the turning tools. Everybody, um, I feel, in life should have a turning tool, uh, especially if you do anything like making bag handles, uh, making tilde toys, anything like that then you need a turning tool in your life and it comes in two different sizes these are the new ones so the old ones were just boring boring navy <laughs> no no these are bright and great fun uh you see again now those ones can go in my uh in my in my hochanda box right so let's very quickly Dee, 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 dee. Press, 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 press. Oh, lovely. 
Now let's pretend that this is a bag handle, shall we, that I'm just pressing here. It's just been on the floor. And let's just very quickly whiz down one side. I said quickly machine. There we are. Aha! That's what I've forgotten this morning. I haven't brought the um, extension table in from the car. I'm thinking, oh, this feels a bit. Feels a bit. what I'm missing isn't it <laughs> it's like what's going on here then this is the uh, the lovely NX7 and because I suddenly realize I've I do everything with the DX7 which is an awesome machine and I absolutely love it but for those of you that are maybe looking for a mightier beast that something that you will never ever grow out of and probably won't ever need another machine then save up for the NX7 because it's awesome and I love it I love it a lot right okay so let's pretend we're making a bag handle oh I don't know about you this is the bit that I really hate the turning through bit haha -ha, no stick the bright pink bit right up there and then you get your wooden bit. Yeah. Turned through just like that. And then you've got your little sticky bit in there to just poke out those edges. And there it is. Done. That's your bag handle turned through. And then you've got the narrow one. And I use this one on Tilda um, arms and legs and stuff for Tilda toys. They're brilliant. So if you do anything like bag making or toy making or anything like that, please, please, please do treat yourself. Look, here we go again. Do treat yourself with just to, there, see, it just pushes through and then through it goes like that. It's incredibly easy. I think the, when we first brought these to sewing quarter years and years and years ago, that's how long I've had these, um, they, they used to challenge me to see how fast I could do it. Six seconds! From a hands on the table start, I think, was the best that I ever managed to, to turn through a full length as well. But there you go. So that's, that, no, that's not it. That's, uh, there we go. This, this is it. So you get the large one and the medium. And I'll be honest, that used to come with, um, with a tiddly tiny one with a metal, pff, rubbish, never used it. So actually they've made, they've, they've realised their mistake. Um, and now they just, they just do the two. These are the only sizes that I've ever used. And then all I do, I keep mine in there. Done, done, done. oh, hang on. Uh, also loving my little magnetic pin thing, majiggy. Shall we have a look at what we're making? To oh no, we haven't done the, 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 getting all ahead of myself. I was only gonna show you two stitches, by the way, with Corin stuff because the blanket stitch you need on all of them pretty much uh we all know how to do a straight stitch or a running stitch so i just wanted to show you how i do the blanket stitch so you blanket stitch all the way around the outside and it is one of those things There we go. I was just reading what Margaret said. I love that you just made a bag for your turning tools. Natasha makes. Yeah, I do. Yeah, no, lovely. Love it. Uh, so you just pop it in through there like that. And you see this loop here. All you're going to do is just pull it through that loop. It is as simple as that. So through the, well, it doesn't have to be the nose, through the felt. And that loop that you've just created you just go through it like that. Now, as you get better at this, your stitches will become more even. I have in the past, no word of a lie, when I've made, I've made so many felt toys for my kids over the years, I have in the past been known to put little markers on my nail <laughs> with marker pen so that I get an even stitch. Honest to God. 
Um, and so around you go. And it's as easy as that. And it's one of those stitches with a blanket stitch. Now, I mean, you could faux blanket stitch on your machine if you wanted to, but it is just one of those stitches that I forget how to do. And I mean, when I say that, I, I mean, I have done loads of big toys as well for the kids, all out of felt, all with blanket stitch. Um, and yet, there you go. So it just hooks and loops. Can you see? It literally just loops, like you're tying a knot in it, mirror like that. In. And like that. There's your loop. And it's just going to go whoop, through the loop as you come through. Well, you can't do it that way because you're about to run out. Well, there you go. That was going to be my last one. I just made it like look like the most difficult thing. Right. Through. Out. Back through that loop. And that's, that is it. Oh, there we go. That is it. Just in. And then, oh, can I manage one more before I have to change? So yeah, that's gonna be the last one that I'm gonna manage before I have to just tie that off and start again. It is white on white, I do realize that. But how gorgeous is that? Now, Corin says on this to um, stitch as you go, I've got my lovely ears up there. Sorry, I'm busy looking what I'm doing and then realizing that actually you can't see because I keep pulling it off the screen. Gorgeous ears there done those at different angles and then round you go now French knots mine have been squiffy and I don't mind admitting that and um, I just couldn't get them right couldn't get them right couldn't get them right and then Inga this morning was like what are you doing why are your French knots so rubbish so if like me you have struggled with your knots in the past then I want to show you something because look, I've got big juicy French knots now. There's no stopping me now. Um, and I was just sort of wrapping it round my needle da, 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 and then just going back in and thinking that that would do it. But it just, it was unravelling and it was ridiculous. So... Inga said, no, 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 you've got to think of it like doing as if you're going to, you know, when you do like an overhand knot, when you do an overhand knot, you would cross the threads. It's like you've got to think of it as you've got to, I'm going to do this on the desk. I can't do it upside down in the air. So, yeah. so this was, this was, this was Inga's advice. She's like, you've got to do it as if you're going to do an over. So if I was going to knot that, I would go through like that, wouldn't I? I would go round and through. And so she said, that's how you want to do your knot. So as if you're going to go and knot through, you then twist it and then put it down and through. I was like, oh, wow, well, that makes a lot more sense then, doesn't it? And then you get your knot. Ta -da! So that made a lot more sense to me. A lot more sense. So if you are struggling at all with your French knots, just think of doing it like an overhand knot and then twist it round. And then you can go round, dun, 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 and then take it in close to where you just came out. And um, it should then pull through and you'll end up, oh, that's a massive one. Um, and then they pull through, but do do it, here we go, let's see if, I don't know if I can manage, in my head, manage to get this around so as if you were coming round to tie a knot like that and then wrap it around your needle and pop it in. 
And if you sort of keep your thumb there, oh, then hopefully that's the worst one I've ever done. Um, right, we're going to leave that there then. <laughs> I've just managed to knot that completely. Uh, and not, it, not in a French knot kind of a way. But yeah, the one I just did, that's the way to do it. Um, I am no needlework expert, by the way, as you can probably just tell. I'm going to snip that off. I've just caught it as it goes through. Um, but honestly, look. Look at the size of those. You can make your French knots any size you like, can't you? And this was as I was learning going around. So you can track your progress. But look, I, I, liked, I wanted to have some really big, chunky ones. Round we go. But look, I'm learning on these things. You can't be good at everything, right? But I think that's really cute. And the thing is, it's a folksy art thing. Uh, yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. She said, yeah, I do that. Ooh, that was a good one when I do a French knot. I still find them really hit and miss, as you can just see. Um, but that whole go round and then wrap, 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 that does, that does, that does work. Um, Eliza Jones, sorry, I have to go soon. My carer just arrived. Catch up with you later. Well, thank you very much. You haven't, you've just missed me doing all OK bar one French knots. Um, and anyway, I was about to run out of thread. Now, the rest are all pretty basic knots. And then, oh yeah, so stuff as you go around the heads. But look, it's one of those things that you guys are infinitely better at embroidery. I'm going to have to put in some hours with my embroidery. But I do love it. And it's one of those things like, do I not do it because I'm not actually all that fabulous at it? Or do I go, do you know what? The only way to get better is to do more of it. Well, I don't have the time to ever get brilliant because... Um, there's always so many more things to do. Let me just put that ear with the body. There we go. But I do find it relaxing. I do enjoy it. And the kids love the things that I've made. So am I going to stop doing it? Because sometimes my French knots goes a bit squiffy. Nah, not at all. It happens. Snip it off. Start again. Job done. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Just enjoy it. That's all it is, isn't it? It's just enjoying it. Shall we have a look at today's make? Elizabeth, I have, I've had this out, by the way, whilst I've been stitching, and I absolutely love it. Thank you so much. See what I mean about infinitely better? Our viewers are infinitely better than I am. How beautifully made is this gorgeous what bow? Actually, that's some of Corinne's felt in there, you know? Thinking about it. Just beautiful. So thank you, Elizabeth. I'm just so touched. Some hard hanger there. Gorgeous. And, and this is it, isn't it? Everybody has their forte of things that they are brilliant at. Love it. Okay, so today's make. Last night I was thinking about um, what, I, what I was going to do on the show. Better late than never, right? Better late than never. What am I going to do? Because I knew that mainly we had Corinne's kits. And by the time that we went through those, there wouldn't be loads of time to do too much. Um, and then I thought, well, hang on a minute. We all need places to put our needles. So, so, so. I kind of set about um, thinking, well, I had... Um, I made my grandmother a needle case. It was one of the very first things. In fact, it's in here. I think I've shown it to you before. And when she died, it came back to me. Gosh, it's all creased. It needs a little bit of a press. Um, but I still have it. So this is how long lasting, because this is about 33 years old. Yeah, because I was at Micklefield and I was there when I was seven. So yeah, 33, possibly 32 years old. They were balloons, but obviously I just like went off on one there. So this is my first attempt at blanket stitch, possibly better than I do it now, to be fair. But <laughs> there it is. And look at all these different stitches. Isn't it beautiful? What's Elizabeth saying? Every one, even wonky ones are done with love. That's my second attempt, Tasha. See, people don't look for mistakes. Uh, that just 
proves it. No, I think it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So this, look, there we go. That was for my grandma, made for her, years and years ago. And this is felt, this is how hard wearing felt is. And then it's got all of her needles. So these have barely been touched. You can see it's got like whatever. These were her needles. So this is super, super special to me. And so, you know, she's used it. Look, I've pinked the edges so that it doesn't fray. And to be fair, for 30 odd years, it barely has. But how well have they all kept in that time? With my amazing balloons. What was going on there? No idea. Maybe it should have been like, I don't know. Anyway, so it occurred to me that felt is really useful for all these things. But I want, so I knew I wanted to have a little felt inner. But then I, ha I found this fabric was, happened to be, I just cut up some more kits because we'd run out of the um, three fat quarters. With that one, there was a Philip Jacobs and then there was the finches and the blooms. So this was this is the prototype. This is the first one. I was like, well, you're going to need a couple of leaves there and da, 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 da. And I got out my, to make the hexes, I got out my hexy trim tool from Creative Grids and was making all my little hexes from there which was great, did that, but it wasn't quite right. So I made, this is the prototype, and, uh, and then I got on the phone to Josh, and uh, I was like, I need some templates, I need some proper templates, can you make some? Yes. So we went through the exact measurements that I needed, he's a whiz on the computer, I'm really not. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, and so the templates that you get with your full instructions in your kit um, are fab. And, and Josh did those. I said what I wanted and he made more. It happened and more. And he just had this moment. He went, have I just improved your design? <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah, you have actually. Is that okay? I'm just going to leave that there. Just improved your design. So in your kit, when uh, whichever one, so this is how it ends up being before we get started. And there are lots of different options on the website. Well, the, actually, this is, this is mine. So this is how it ends up being. I'll show you here. This is one with, so I've got a Liberty one now. Look at this. And then when you open it up, so this is all set for me to finish off going around my llama. I don't know if anybody else does this, but because it's felt, stuff sticks to it. So instead of getting myself in a tangle with threads, especially because I'll go and sit on the sofa with Emily later and do this, I just twirl them around, stick them on the felt, and then just pop a pin through, and it just holds it there, and it keeps it there, and I know exactly then where my threads are. So they're the only colours that I've got left to add onto my llama. And then there's the ribbon. So not only do I keep my needles in there and that they're primed and ready to go there, but actually I also organise my threads on mine because they sort of stick to the felt. I, am I the only one that does that? Am I the only one that does that? And then you've got some lovely silky, silky round ribbon. I don't know what its technical terms is. The guy that I bought it from called it rat's tail and that really put me off because they're like rats. Um, but he don't know. Anyway. So that is my little Liberty hexy, hexy one. So there we go. Uh, and so we're going to make it. I'm going to show you how to make it. And I've got some kits for you. It's how organised I've been this morning. Like, don't get used to it, but... So you get your hexagons and the um, instructions are all being all being um, printed off as we go. So you get H640, I'll show you about that in a minute. Um, in this kit, and you get in your kit, you will get your piece of felt, which is the size of the one on the table. You'll get a fat quarter, so you get loads left over, and you get your ribbon as well. And that is 
that's a K facet one. So that's your row flower. Lovely. Um, so let's pop that back because that, that will be someone's. See, look, they're all, they're all in their little boxes ready to go. And then there's the fern one. So there are a few K for few Liberty and then uh, one extra. But look, as soon as I saw the purple felt, I was like, uh, yeah, that needs to go. And I thought because you get the fat quarter, you can fussy cut and have that in there and that'll be absolutely gorgeous. And then there's your, I can't call it rat's tail. Can someone please tell me what it is? Um, because I can't keep calling it rat's tail. That's horrible. But now it's kind of stuck in my head. The one I'm going to demo with um, is the Finch. Finch and Bloom, it's called. And look, you see the felt, it just, ah. Oh. And then look at that gorgeous teal ribbon. Beautiful. And again, I'm going to be able to fussy cut with that. So that is that one. Um, all of these are on the website, which is why I'm not going to bore you by taking hours and hours and hours over this, but they are all there, so you can just decide which ones you want. Um, and then the Liberties, there are six different Liberty options. Um, this is actually different. They look very similar. So this one, option one and option six, look quite similar. But if I show you, that is, this is the brand new Liberty collection, by the way. That is option six there. So the one that I've made is option six, but you can see it looks quite similar to that one, but it is different. This is more of a sort of a watercolory feel. Um, there we go. Oh, hang on. Emma's just tried to tell me something. It's called what? I called it Sparrow and Bloom. Oh, it's not a sparrow. Oh, man. Is it a sparrow? Oh, I don't know. Well, you got me there. I'll have a look. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that is option one. Come on, switch camera, switch. There we go. That's option number one on the Liberty front. They were imaginatively called option uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I love this one. I love it. I love it. I love it. So you've got white with the um, Liberty teal. And look doesn't that work beautifully so I just thought there was a simplicity about this one that just worked gorgeously so you've got finch sounds better than sparrow yeah I don't know I'm not very up on my birds I haven't been through the felt birds book enough uh, so that's your white which picks up on that but then the teal I thought worked beautiful just gorgeous and that's Liberty fabric as well from the brand new collection uh, so that's a quilting weight Liberty as well me tidying as I go and then option are oh, the roses the gorgeous roses dee, 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 dee. and again that teal works so beautifully with this oh lovely 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 uh, so there's that one and then just brings it it's just that little detail thing isn't it and these are super easy to make now, there, you see, this is one of those fabrics that you look at and you go, well, that has to be Liberty. That can't be anybody but Liberty, can it? That is option number four. These are, like I say, these are all on the website. Um, and you get the H640 fat quarter of fabric, the felt, uh, the in full instructions and the templates. Um, and you are all good to go. Liberty number five. Gorgeous. Lovely. I just, I find it really hard to have a favourite with the Liberties because they're all so beautiful, really beautiful. And then, like I say, this is the one, so this is the one that my actual one was made out of. It is quite similar to option number one on the Liberty front. But that's the one that I made ba -ba, mine out of. So there we go. Shall we see how to make it? Let's crack on, shall we? Uh, so, 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 so. <laughs> round ribbon is called tubular ribbon thank you jane i knew someone would know someone always knows um oh, beautiful new iron uh somebody always knows which is good because i don't tubular I've got to remember tubular right so you have to cut out your templates first of all and what you will need is 
out of your H640 that you get in your kit, you will cut out your four inch template and you will cut two, two, two um, of your H640s. For those of you that don't know what H640 is, you are absolutely forgiven. It is a fusible fleece. Can you see these chilly, chilly, tiny little dots? That They're little glue dots on there, uh, which is fab. So we're going to use that. It's sort of a little bit like English paper piecing, a little bit, this project, kind of. You'll, you'll see. Bear with me, you'll see. So you cut those out. Um, now, I thought about cutting out the felt um, and having it all ready to go in one of those like Blue Peter and here's when I cut out earlier moments. Um, but then I thought, actually, no, because the templates are slightly different. So I just wanted to go through that with you. Um, so this is the first of the templates. And um, so that's where that's where it folds, basically. And that's the spine of it. So that was really important. And getting that the right width, well, we went through quite a few widths. Believe you me, there was quite a lot of felt around um, everywhere. So um, cut out whatever you want with scissors, whichever bits you feel comfortable cutting out with scissors. I have just gently pinned that onto there. Um, it, it's fine. If you are using um, a ruler, then you know these are magic pins. So there's kind of a grip on them anyway. You can press on them uh, with your iron. They don't melt. So they're really useful to have. Um, but also I've got some grip on my ruler as well. So I'm all good to go. So I'm just going to make a little cut on my felt. I'm not going to cut all the way. I've got my perfect five ruler, which is indeed perfect for this. But I'm not going to go all the way up into that, that little detaily bit there. So... I'll cut as much as I can and then go in with detail. Now you see, I probably take that pin out now. Oh yeah, that's easier. I should have got my, I should have whipped out my old rotating cutting mat, shouldn't I? That would have been useful right now. If you feel happier cutting this with scissors, then do. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but coming into here, I'm not going to go all the way in. I'm going to cut to a point and that'll be that. Um, and then, oh look, I've got my little magnetic-y thing. This is great. I'm just starting to get used to wearing it now. And I have to say, super enjoying it. Uh, because otherwise my, well, how many times we have to go, where's my pins? Where's my pins? So when these arrived in my box from Prim, I was like, yes, yes, yes. I will happily have that. Thank you very much. Okay, let's just check that I've cut everywhere. Ba, 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 ba. Yep, 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 yep. Now... If you want to get a pen, mark that last bit off, then do. If you want to just mark the whole thing, then do. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. And then just go in with a small pair of snips, but do follow those lines. Now these scissors that I'm using today are super duper duper sharp. Let me show you these. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, and these are the ones that double up as um, stitch rippers. So you can flip that out, lock that off like that, and then you can use it as a stitch unpicker. So it is, there we go, let me pop it there. You can see it is super sharp. 
Um, and the only reason I got that is A, because I keep losing my stitch unpicker, and secondly, because I keep trying to unpick stuff with my scissors and it doesn't work. So I thought I would get an actual pair of scissors whose job is to unpick stuff. But it means that they are incredibly sharp to the tip and so very handy to have. Um, I've got a few pairs of those if you wish. Um, I think I can get hold of some more of those. I think they were ones they had in stock. It's one of those things. So a lot of the suppliers obviously struggling with stuff coming in um, and sometimes they still have stock up on their website and you buy it thinking, oh great, it'll be there here in a couple of days. And, uh, and then you end up ringing them going, where is it? And they go, oh yeah, so um, that is one of our guaranteed in stock items, but uh, yeah, it's not in stock. And you go, well, thanks, thanks for telling me. Right, so that is one of them. And then you will also get this one. Now this one looks slightly different. Josh calls it the bow tie. You know who I'm talking about when I say Josh, don't you? Josh does, um, when you get your instructions and they don't look like my early instructions because they've been whizzy whizzed, then Josh is, they've been joshed. And he does, um, he does all the website for me and he, um, yeah, he is our design whiz and he makes everything look pretty. Oh my goodness me, just you wait until you see block of the month and what he's done. So he has done the most incredible like compendium for block of the month. So if you are missing anything or you just wanna make the quilt, then we've got the full instructions and Josh has made them look incredible. So um, you can just cut these out. Mm -mm -mm. And again, it is a little bit weird down to there. So what I would suggest you do, if you are at all worried, is just snip past there and we'll get into that detail in a minute. And I know, you see, what I would do probably is take, keep one pin in on the side that you're not cutting keep one pin in so that the whole thing doesn't move around because you've got it anchored in one place at least. <laughs> Should have had my rotating cutting mat, but it just goes to show you don't have to have all your whizzy whizzy gadgets. in order to do this, because that is important, isn't it? Having everything accessible for everyone, no matter what your level, how many bits and bobs you've got um, in your stash. Is everyone all right? Is everyone following so far? So as I then come back to this bit, I'll pop that pin out, make sure that that's aligned properly Put that pin in. I probably shouldn't have used one of my super fine pins, but <coughs> no one's looking. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, around there. And up to there. Now, you can get the instructions with the template by itself. And what I will just do in a second. is just double check that this will fit onto Corin's felt as well. Let's go around this. So on this, on this detail bit here, where it goes in, along, and back in again, the bow tie bit, as Josh calls it, I'm just gonna mark that off. And just cut that up, across, and down. This is where having good scissors helps. Uh, 
I've used a friction pen. I need to get some friction pens actually on the site because you can use an iron that will come off, but it does mean it, it works. It marks quite nicely on felt because felt isn't always the easiest to mark with. Now then, this is why I left Corins out. So let me just check these templates. This is the size of Corin, so that will fit on. Move that across to there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if you have bought the felt sheets, you can fit out the middle bit um, on those. So yeah, you're fine on that as well. You just get a bit extra on here. Now, from doing that funny bit of cutting, so that funny bit of cutting there does look a bit strange, doesn't it? But what that means, la, 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 look, genius, is that that is going to sit in there beautifully with a quarter of an inch seam all the way around. I'm going to mark off that line, then those two lines there and that. Um, I'm going to mark those. Bear with me. Let me show you. And I'm just, I'm going to use my friction pen because you can see it. So this will act. Let me show you. Here we are. So um, that will be a stitch line that will hold everything together. This is the spine of your book. Your, no, uh, your needle keep. So when that is on top of there, like so, if you keep within those guidelines there, you can do a beautiful decorative stitch or you can just stitch straight and then it just all folds nicely. And that's the edge of then that hexagon there. It's all been really well, beautifully thought out. Um, and then that one will be stitched on there and you'll, well, I'll show you, I'll show you. So that is your starting point. The other thing that I would do as well, and I would probably do it here whilst it is still flat. And I would probably do it um, with one of your little rulers is just mark off quarter of an inch around the edges here, just lightly. And it only needs to be for, for sort of for your eyes, but I would use it if you are in any way unsure about your quarter of an out, uh, out the quarter of an inch seam. Then I would just mark it now around we go. This is where the little rulers. This is the perfect five, by the way, from Creative Grids. And it really is the perfect size. It's not too big. So you can see I've just marked around there. And then my other marker will be there by the time that that is in place. I'll be sewing down there. Then we'll move that out of the way. And then we'll stitch around there. But we'll get there. Oh, Linda's... Um, Corner cutter has just arrived. Well done. Good, good, good. It, there's, there's fab and, and that's the thing. I was incredibly lucky to discover Creative Grids early on uh, because it saved me wasting my money um, on other rulers that I wouldn't have liked so much once I discovered Creative Grids. Um, and I think there is a, re a reason. I, I tried lots of other rulers because I was working on other channels where they did quilting, but I could never quite get into, I sewed, but I could never quite get into quilting because the ruler scared me because they moved around. Now look, I'm not even putting, I've got my fingers on the edges there, but look, it's not moving anywhere because it's still got that inbuilt grip. They're just fab little rulers. Um, so, now, We've got those quarter of an inches marked. If you are happy with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, then just go with it. You are all good. In fact, while I remember, I will put my quarter of an inch seam allowance on there. Although, actually, I don't need to because I've just marked it. Right. So, 
what we do next is um, fabric. I would fussy cut, if you have fabric as gorgeous as this, then look, I, <laughs> right in the middle, isn't it? Of course it is right in the middle. Of course it's right in the middle. <laughs> of course it is. Then <laughs> I would work out where you want, where you want it to be and then just draw around. This doesn't have to be accurately drawn it, uh, or cut or anything like that. You know when you do your hexes for English paper piecing, we don't, we're not always neat, are we, about how, about how we do them? Because we know that we're going to fold them over. So I would just go in and just rough cut this. It doesn't matter if it's a bit bigger, it doesn't have to be straight. It really doesn't matter, but it does just need to be cut and done. Oh gosh, yeah, I've gone way over there. It doesn't matter. Let me trim that back a little bit. So this bit doesn't have to be accurate, but I have got my bird right in the middle. Um, and then I will do another, what do I want for the back bit? Maybe just some flowers. So this is just uh, really thinking about your placement and what you want. This will be the back of it and what you want on your front and on the back and where you want that to be. If you're rough cutting these like I am, obviously go to the outside of the line. Don't go on the inside else you're going to lose your seam allowance. Um. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Claire. Uh, she said, cut a window into your template if you're fussy cutting. Yeah, do you know what? Because I had, when I did, um, well, actually, the bird was mystified on. I haven't got the name of the fabric on it. I was just going to. I think it is finch ems. I think it is a finch, not a sparrow. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> getting the name wrong. Uh, right, okay, let's come then back to the iron over here. Um, yeah, the only way, what I'd, I'd been using my hexy, my Creative Goods hexagon tool, and that's clear and see through. So there we go. Now you're going to take the four inch template that you cut your H640 with. And you're going to place that in the middle there. And as if you were basting, uh, you're starting to, to baste your English paper piecing, use the edge of that paper as a template and just fold over the edge and press. No glue involved but fold over the edge and press and just keep spinning it around, fold over the edge. So what you're doing is getting that nice crisp hexy and if you want to give it a quick um, spritz, which I will in a minute, with uh, your misty fuse, not your misty fuse, your, um, gosh, that's what I want. Best press, then that will help this keep its shape. Probably should have done that at the start, shouldn't I? But just use the edge of the paper as you would when you English paper piece to give that nice crisp finish. And the last edge, there we go. And this is why it doesn't matter if it's bigger, if the, the fabric is bigger, it doesn't matter. And then just take it out. So what you're left with 
is that. And as I've gone round, I've systematically folded as I've gone, folded the next one, folded the next one, folded the next one. And I'm going to do that on the other one, on the next one. So pop that to one side, get your next one out. In fact, I'm going to give that a quick, quick spritz with the old uh, best press before we start. There we go. And flip and press. And that is all you're doing. It's just pressing. But how handy is having just everything sitting here? So when we start out as well. So when I start making patterns, um, very, very rarely does it happen just in one take. Uh, there'll be a few. There'll be a few a few trial and errors along the way um, and for this one what it became apparent was was that I needed slightly more than a quarter of an inch seam um, and that's what I've got so it doesn't matter like I say when you cut out from your template which is just slightly bigger than five inches um, feel free to go bigger um, but please don't go inside the lines please don't go any smaller So this is fundamentally like English paper piecing at the moment. But what we're going to do next is take out the take out the card and instead slot in your H640 where that was. And this is where having pins to hand is very handy. So what I will do is start again. And on those corners where you've just pressed them, just pop in a little pin, just to hold those edges. It just keeps everything crisp. Now, like I say, I'm using magic pins, so they're lovely and fine. And also they can be, you can use your iron on them and, and it won't, um, it won't melt them. Cause you know, we've had that happen before. Not here. But I've known it happen. Uh, so to uh, to get rid of that little error, <laughs> just get yourself pins that aren't going to melt. And again, the magic pins are another thing that will be coming back there. So um, out of America, normally stuff that would have been flown freight is now having to come across the sea because there aren't any, uh, many airlines flying. Um, so that's why there's the delay on everything coming out of America at the minute. So what I've done, let me show you, is this. Whee! And all I'm going to do now, so the dots are facing up. So I'm going to go in with the edge of my mini iron. And this is where having a mini iron is great. Or if in doubt, get your, um, get your pressing sheet to protect your iron if you're in any way worried and push along there there we go and we're just going to press along there which means it's just going to hold it just like gluing it in place now if you wanted the reason that i used a wadding on this and as i go i can just start to take out my pin so i'm just going to go in just on there take out this is so useful using the edge of my iron but if I were worried in any way shape or form because obviously it's just come out of the packet then I would just get uh, my pressing and because I know that my pins can be pressed then I can do that if I'm at all worried and it will melt the dots but it won't pull the glue off the dots that's the joy of your pressing sheet so if you want to use a pressing sheet then do I'm not going to so that you can actually see what I'm doing. But I did when I made it earlier. And as you go around, just remove the pins as you go. Now you will be sewing these in place. So this is just to hold it for now. There we go. So what it will look like is that.
and look how crisp that is there. All right, and then you'll repeat it with your back half. And then it's nice and squidgy, so that if you want to uh, put your pins into, into that bit, you can as well, because you'll have the felt on the other side of it, so you'll be good to go. So repeat that process, put it in dots, gluey dots up. Now, if you don't have um, HX40, if you don't buy one of the kits, but you just buy the instructions and you're doing this at home uh, without H640, well, firstly, you can buy H640 um, off the website. But secondly, if you are doing this at home without H640 and, and you've got like a sew line glue pen or something like that, then just use that. Just glue baste it like you would. Um, the only reason that I've done it with H640 is it just makes it a little bit easier because I can then fix in place my um, my felt. Do, 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 do. Forward over that edge there. Sometimes just need two hands. There we go. Come on, Edge. Work with me there. There we go. And if you do have any that, like that one that wants to play up a little bit, just nip in with the nose of your of your iron but then if you're in any way shape or form worried and you just want to get a little bit more just press with your sheet and there we go nearly there It just takes a couple of minutes just to do, but it is worth getting this bit right and just getting those. All this is doing is getting those crisp edges on that hexagon. That's all we're doing. Last one to do there and we're all done. Right, so I want that there, get them the right way around. So this is just thinking about which way around I want it. So the bird will be there like that. So we'll put that like that and then get your larger one and just place over the top and that should sit really happily there. Probably should have done this on my pressing mat. But the templates will just sit over the top really nicely. Um, so if you are in any doubt, take one away, just press one. So that will just sit over the top there. Get your pressing sheet now. Uh, for all of those that ordered the pressing sheet, uh, they should be on their way out today. There was a slight delay with the parchment paper, but like I say, they should be on their way out today. Um, they're all stacked up in the hall ready to go. So they'll go down today. They should have gone on Saturday, but of course the post office is still on uh, reduced hours. Now, because I'm going through my sheet, normally I'll be really careful about how I press felt, but because I'm going through a pressing sheet, there's less to worry about. Um, and all that does, because I've got the H640, it's just helping to hold that in place. Again, if you wanted to glue base that with your sew line pen, then please do. Um, which way around do I want those flowers? That way, I think. So then I'm going to pop that onto that one line up around those edges and it will just sit happily 
on top. Of course, I've just realised because I've pressed this on now, I've just lost all of my um, all of the quarter of an inch marks that I so beautifully drew on with my pen to sew on with later. Uh, because of course, <laughs> I didn't use that earlier. I just used my normal pen. Oh, I forget the friction pens. Oh. They are, the, the pen comes away with heat. So you are then left with, and it is, it's basically just tacking it all in place. So it's, it's hold on by the H640. And there it is on the back there, but we need to do some stitching, but it's fundamentally in place there. And that is covering there and there, but we're going to pop the other one on. So get your second sheet and lay it over there. Now, the lines that I'm going to stitch down are here. I'm going to stitch down here, 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 and here. I'm going to stitch down those four lines. Okay, and that will start to get everything then in place. I might even do something fancy, fancy down there. You never know. Um, should we start with something fancy? Shall we, shall we? Uh, so the beauty of this is that with this particular foot on, uh, the, the width is exactly the same um, as the, the one that I have drawn. So let's pick ourselves something decorative, shall we? Because, you know, I've got a machine that does. So let's do it. And I'll take that down to a width of about four and a half. Oh, helps if we actually put it near. Are we threaded? Are we threaded there? No, we're not. Wondered why we weren't doing anything. Right. Uh, let's do that then. Quickly thread it. There we go. Lift up that foot. Go back a little bit. There we go. If you want to use a walking step foot or whatever, then you can. Oh, I've just put it on. You just do it once. No, no, no. I've got to remember how to take that off now. No, there we go. I pressed that by mistake. I do not want it to just do one stitch. It's very good, this machine. If you ask it to, it will just do the one stitch and then stop. So as I get to the end, if I want it to do like a complete round of the stitch, there's, oh, and it also tells me at which stage I'm at. And then it will finish off. So it will finish off the stitch and finish it off where I'm at, which is gorgeous. I'm going to cut that thread, lift the foot, and you can see. It's done me just a little decorative stitch down the spine. Then I'm going to stitch um, a straight stitch. So let's go back to utility, straight stitch there. Hang on. Why, 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 why? Oh. I don't know why it wants me to do. I am still learning this machine. Let's just turn, if in doubt, <laughs> turn it off and on. I hope I haven't got it to the point <laughs> where it remembers exactly what stitch I was doing. The machine, so this is the NX7, and 
it is fabulous at so many things and um but i'm still learning it i've had it for a while but it's got so many different features that even now occasionally and i was demoing it the other day and of course i've changed all my settings because of demoing it and i can't remember what i've turned off and on and i completely haven't actually changed anything so i'm just going down with a straight stitch down that line and I'll go down that line so yeah bear, bear with me because I can't remember what uh what settings I put onto it if you want to just do a little holding stitch first then do and then again front and end yeah Elizabeth says that's the point I turn the machine off and on I will sit back through and go back through and change all my settings, but do you know what? Just turning it off and on is also fine. Snip any, any little threads, and so I've got those stitches. And what that's done is just held everything together there. Um, so we are now good to go. And if you, I've done this in a contrasting stitch. The other ones I did with threads that didn't, didn't show up so much get rid of those snips uh, we are now going to take that out of the way so that's our this is our front our front page if you like you're thinking of it like a book and because that's your quarter of an inch in from the end of that we're going to start there we're going to go a quarter of an inch all the way around and that's going to hold everything then in place and we are then good to go so because I lost all my quarter of an inch marks, I shall simply have to. Right. Use the edge of my foot like a normal person. If you want to go in and draw it, what it means is that you will have the exact perfect point on the corners. I know, you know, if you've got a walk, if you've got a quarter of an inch foot, then you'll be absolutely fine. But because you're working with a hexagon, you're working at a slightly strange angle. Or just top stitch it, it's fine. Whatever you fancy. But I went a quarter of an inch in, which takes me back up there to that point. So I've gone all the way around with my quarter of an inch and back to that point there. So from that point, from that corner point there of the fold, all the way around back to that corner point there. And then that gives you, it's just another little design thing that gives you all of your complete hexy there. So I will then push that to one side. I will start at that point there and do my quarter of an inch all the way around that little bit. Right. Put down, make sure I'm in the right position. Oh, Elizabeth would do this by hand. Yes. Now, you see, if you have time to hand stitch, beautiful, you could do all sorts of different things, couldn't you? But um, for me, <laughs> there are deadlines and children that need feeding, copious amounts of snacks, uh, animals that need feeding. Basically, for me, yeah, life is a bit too short. But no, do take your time, she says, rushing it. I'm wishing she hadn't rushed it. But coming back to that quarter of an inch marker there. <laughs> Lane. I wasn't going to buy, uh, but a needle kit just fell into my basket. Oops, it happens, it happens. Uh, then you'll snip all of your little edges. There we go. Now, of course, what I completely forgot to add in uh, was the ribbon. And you don't have to have it. If you just want it like that, then you can, because 
it's there. Uh, but if you want to, you can either hand stitch that on um, or what I did earlier uh, was actually just pop it in and into that seam allowance. But when you have the instructions in front of you, it will be in the instructions to do that. Uh, what I could go in with, of course, is my unpicker. Shall I do that and just uh, pop at least one in so that you can see? So it'll be on the opposite end to there. Gosh, that is a small stitch. Of course, it's quarter of an inch, isn't it? So it does, it does a tiny little stitch. Oh, do you know what is my other newfound favourite thing? And I don't actually know what I've been doing all my life with that at all. Um, so, so I bought this when, you know, the other week I was doing the plastic snaps. And, um, and I said, oh, look in your, to make the hole for where the plastic bit comes through of the snap on your bag. I said, oh, look in your sewing kit in, uh, that comes with your machine because, you know, often there's an awl in there. And, uh, and resoundingly, I realised that actually I'm very spoiled because Juki come with one. Uh, but everybody else is like, no, no, it doesn't. Not, not actually what everybody's machine comes with at all. Uh, so I've bought these awls and they are, it's a tailor's awl and it's on the website. But where has it been all my life? Uh, because it just means you can, when a seam isn't quite, just poke it, just poke it. It's all good. Your 10 inch um, piece of ribbon, uh, just cut in half. I happen to just turn over the edges. Again, this is one of those situations that people that are braver than I probably um, would just take a lighter to the end. But actually, I quite like having that not there. Um, but yeah, so with your with your all, if you've forgotten like me, uh, just make yourself a little, a little hole. Your all will do that. Stick your, you see, this is how handy it is. It's that extra, it's that extra hand when you need it. Come on. I'm trying to do this so that you can see. Uh, do you know what? I've just got to do it so that I can see, let alone if you can see. I need to actually be able to see what I'm doing. I've only made the tiniest of holes. There we go. In it goes. So this is what I should have done earlier, meant to do and completely forgot because I was chatting. Um, that will go within that, uh, into there. And all I'll do now is just go back in and just stitch over that. Because now I am thinking um, Anna, there we go. And what I did when I stitched this in um, earlier properly, I did go just back and forwards over that little bit there. There we go. But you will, of course, do this perfectly and uh, do it first time around because you'll be reading the instructions that um, I haven't actually got out on the table. Because okay, it's my it's my instructions. It's my it's my make, right? What can possibly go wrong? Well, I could forget to do, you know, <laughs> vital parts of it. But yeah, so you'll do that the other side, and that will be your little tie, so that then, when it's all done and dusted, you'll tie it, and there it is. That's it made. So that just sits in halfway down. And then you can open it up. You'll obviously snip off any excess little things. But it's really neat, isn't it? I love, I love what Josh has done with, uh, with the templates and everything. And because that's got your H640, it's nice and squidgy, so you can use the front and the back as well. And of course, you can do as many of these as you want. I just did the one insert because I'm going to use that bit. But you could do multiples. It, do, it really doesn't matter at all. So there you go. That's it. Made. Done. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Susan's saying, use my, uh, I'll use your craft one. Are they the same? I wasn't sure. My craft one is so covered in glue at the tip from putting gems on stuff. I, like, I don't really want that near fabric. Um, oh, yeah, use it. Yeah, there we go. You used your craft one. Um, 
an iron on a small mat jumped into your basket. These things happen. Uh, these little mats are so handy. And um, yeah, the little mats, but then the big ones are really great too. Because then when you're doing larger sizes, but the little ones for a project like this, the little craft mats, or if you go to your caravan, or if, you, um, you know, if you're on the move somewhere, they're brilliant. And the beauty of these mats, of course, is they're super, super thin as well. So normally the wool mats, firstly, they smell of sheep, which I don't mind because I quite like sheep um, growing up on a sheep farm. Um, but these are super, super thin and super crisp. These are the pressing mats that are used by the tailors on Savile Row. Okay, so they have, they have ancestry and they last and last and stuff. They're handed down from, um, not expert, uh, sort of like master tailor they get handed down so there are some that are like 90 years old on Savile Row um, still being used and and that was what gave Alistair the idea to to create his own branded ones so he sources the felt really carefully and this new colored one actually um, is by appointment to her majesty the queen not the pressing mats but the wool it goes on the underside of the collars of the um, of the the fancy schmancy things that her guards and what have you wear so just Top notch, top notch, absolutely top notch. Uh, so that was just a little, a little aside. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Coming to the conclusion um, that it's a flaw on the website. Keeps happening too. Are what things just popping in your basket? Yeah, 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 yeah. Things do not, they just jump in. Um, blanket stitch would always also look neat. What around this? Depends how neat your blanket stitch is. Actually, a blanket stitch, you could machine blanket stitch or you could hand blanket stitch, yeah? By the time that you've done your corin animals, you'll be blanket stitching everything. Absolutely. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I've really enjoyed myself, even if I, uh, you could use a plastic snap to close it. You could. You could, Anne. You absolutely could. Um, there are plastic snaps. I've added extra colours as well on the plastic snap front. Um, so if you did buy the plastic snaps, you've got that. Um, Karen says, good morning, Natasha. You used to have a massive grey mat on the table. I was wondering where you got it from, please. The massive grey mat was from Horn. Um, they're not cheap. They're about, I think they're over £120. But, but, but. I cut through it because I was doing so much cutting. I mean, like so much cutting for everything. But it, we use it in the other room because now we use the electric scissors uh, for cutting all the fabric because we cut so much. I mean, the mats are not made for, none of these mats are made for industrial use and that's effectively what we're doing. So um, we use the electric scissors, which have been revolutionary for us. And actually the little groove that I made on cutting on the same mark all the time is great because that's my half an inch mark and the scissors just sit in there and whoop. so it's all worked out absolutely beautifully. But that's where that is uh, because a self-healing cutting mat with the amount, I mean, bear in mind like, so just one day alone the other day, I put up over 300 half meters of fabric for sale. It's a lot of cutting. I mean, like think how much you, how many times you would cut that. And also you would rarely cut exactly in the same spot the whole time. So they do go through a lot, but that's why I moved across actually onto the June Taylor cutting mats, which again are on that slow ship from America expected um, in July uh, because it's not self healing. And that's what I really like was the, the crispness of these cutting mats uh, was because it kind of comes up to meet the rotary blade rather than the rotary blade sinking in. It just meets and gives you that crisp line. It's a bit like when you die cut fabric in a die cutting machine and you'd use a metal shim to give that really crisp cut. That's kind of what this feels like. It's not metal, but it, it just it comes up. And this actually fared better than a self-healing one with the volume of cutting that we were doing but 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 they don't do these in the size of the gray one and if i do any dressmaking or anything like that then the gray one is the one that i use it's horses for courses isn't it but that's been my that uh you see elizabeth that's what you mean but you know whole bars i can't help but be honest about it um yeah so yes we still use it but it's used out there uh this one is now my day-to-day -day one in here 
and it has done a lot of the it's got all my half meter marks um on here as well so they all get very heavily used and if i can't break them they're pretty sturdy <laughs> there you go um Fiona said, lovely show this morning. Off to sew now. Go and sew. Go and sew. Uh, so I hope, that's how, I hope that has helped, Karen. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone for, for watching this morning. I will be back tomorrow. We're going to make some round handle bags and something else, which I'm in the process of finishing off making. So I'm not going to jinx it in case it all goes horribly wrong. Um, you have to tune in and see. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.